I want to talk about, um, I drew up a little chart here behind me and I uh, put it on the board here and uh, it's a little better than what, what I did last week. Um, but it's dealing with the corridor and uh, I drew our, our two helpers here the young lady in pink and the guy in uh, yellow. And uh, then I divided the quarter in three parts. And so last time we discussed um, this passage and this pathway. And uh, so what I want to do is uh, the, the first part is just to ask a few questions of you, in some cases, simple questions, but um, let's see, and, and if you don't mind, I'll just call on um, a couple of people. Uh, Mallory's a good bet. <laughs> uh, Mallory, could you turn your mic on and give us a little idea of what the corridor, or the word corridor as I use it, even means. Um, can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, I can hear myself twice. So I can hear myself in your room. Okay, yeah. that's better. It's just weird because it's a delay. Sure. Um, okay, so as I understand it, the corridor is when a person is about to enter the sufferings of Christ and they can see it's about to happen and they may not be fully locked in, loaded in with the Lord yet. So there's this potential for um, carnal mind interpretations and fears kind of getting the better of you, and you're looking down it. And um, is that kind of what you're looking for? And he's about to make a decision of he's, if he's going to go with the Lord or not. Right. Um, <clears throat> I think probably um, I, I I think that I've change this a little bit. I've gone back to what I said a couple of weeks ago, and I just removed the, the thing out here where we're going through. Here's the guy and the girl, uh, because you really do start facing those things when you're in the corridor, and I was kind of talking about before, but you can't, you can't really, it's not possible to really see it coming in a certain sense. It's meant to like like what happened with Peter uh, when they took Jesus away, uh, it's meant to put you in it and then you start developing. So, so the corridor itself is um, what you said, but there are a few other words that I'm looking for here. So let me call on someone else, uh, th and that's good, that's not bad, that's a good answer. Uh, um, Let's see. Um, well, let's see. We got Robert. Uh, Robert, if you'll turn your mic on. Um, what is your basic understanding? I mean, I'm using this word corridor, but what is the most simple explanation of what the corridor is? Can you can you give me that? And that's this whole. I've got it divided into three blocks or three categories or three parts uh, and I, I have each one like the first one is in blue the middle one's in red because that's more red alert and then the the la last one is in gold or you know <laughs> there we find gold um, so Robert can you unmute your mic and just give me a little idea of what you think the quarter represents I saw the corridor as the sufferings of Christ. There you go. As the sufferings of Christ. And then the three areas being different uh, modes of our reaction to the sufferings of Christ. And I think that's about the easiest, simplest way I can say it. Yeah, that's... That's really what I was looking for, and it wasn't that Mallory was wrong, but, you know, I mean, obviously, um, the subject here, let's see if I can get a P 
pen, and I can't tell if you can, but it, the subject really is, and you, I don't know how many of you can read this, but anyway, The subject really is the sufferings of Christ, and that's what um, that's what the book of First Peter has designated and made those words so prominent in. Uh, see, I can tell if I'm in here or not. So so prominent or not, but I'm using the corridor simply to begin to try to. Um, uh, show that it's it's like there there's a time period uh, there's a event uh, and that event is the sufferings of Christ uh, and there's um, uh, there, there's a lot more to it in that it's in stages and so if we can um, you know, in that sense, when we talk about the corridor, only see it in light of, like, we're using that as a term of passage through the sufferings of Christ. And that there are, there are genuinely, there are genuinely different things that happen in each section of the corridor or in each portion of the passage as we go through the sufferings of Christ. And um, so if we can really begin to understand that, then eventually what we'll be able to do with ease is take the book of First Peter and I could say to you, okay, so-and-so scripture, what part of the corridor or the sufferings of Christ would that refer to, and you, hopefully, when we've gone through this enough, you'll be able to go, well, that's the second part, or that's the end part, or that's the beginning, uh, and have a good grasp on on uh, First Peter for yourself uh, in being able to see it the way Peter has laid it out. So, um, very good. All right. Um, Let's see. I was thinking about um, I was thinking about going over some of this again. Um, uh, I don't want to go too fast, and I don't want to give you too much information. So I may be, you know, cutting down our classes, and if I can, simplify them more or go over it again uh, at times to help get the, the picture without it just being said once. Uh, I do want you to know, and this is the honest truth, uh, I constantly go back to the Lord and I constantly uh, ask Him and seek Him to give me new ways of saying or demonstrating them um, for your help so that you may know the Lord the way that he wants you to know him in first Peter. So, and sometimes that those, those going back is, uh, um, well, it, it takes a little bit of effort. I'll just say like that to really hear from him for another approach that can, can help us. Uh, but that's my, that's my place. You know, what a, what did Paul say? He said, um, we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, your servants, for Christ's sake. And I remember the years ago, the Lord showing me that in modern day religion, particularly Christianity, if you're a pastor or you're a elder or you're this or that, you're, you're somebody that's high and that everyone lives, they should serve that person and stuff. And I've seen it in so many churches. I mean, the, the, all the tithe goes to the pastor or, and all of the, you know, all these things. <clears throat> and uh, the Lord dealt with me that 
you know, he blessed me in making me a servant to you guys. And that's what I want to do. And I want to be as diligent as I can. So I'm going to be introducing, I think he's shown me some things. I might have mentioned it last week, but not tonight. But I, I think he's shown me some things that down the road is going to help us some more even. Um, okay, so what, I'm, what I feel like doing is um, just going over uh, some of what I did last week and then maybe adding to that. Okay, so I'm, so I'm just going to read instead of teach because we've already been through this. Um, there, are, there are two different approaches to the corridor. Now, we'll get into the fact, so I'm, I gave a simple explanation last week, and we'll get into the fact that, that, that it's a little more, a few more options, uh, but it's important to understand it. And that's why I use the picture of the girl and the guy and, the, and how they reacted to that um, to help us understand the basic first, the basic response. So there are two different approaches to the corridor having two different results. The corridor of the sufferings of Christ and fellowship with, with him in it, because we're not just talking about going through sufferings, we're talking about going through the sufferings of Christ and fellowshipping with Him in it. That's a huge part of what this is about. Okay? Um, uh, appears different depending on what we identify the sufferings as. So that's what we did with the girl and the guy. Uh, we said the guy, that the guy, um, you know, he just saw it as a big storm coming a big problem, a big trial, and she saw it as the sufferings of Christ. And uh, so um, we see them in one of two ways. The identification of a coming or present trial will either be identified by us as being the sufferings of Christ or uh, as strange as a strange fiery trial that comes from evil people, the devil, or some other source other than God. All right, so uh, don't misunderstand this, and I don't think I said it last time. There are trials and things that can come our way that are of the devil or this or that or whatever that are not set up by God to be the sufferings of Christ, and we're not ready we haven't even got grasped the sufferings of Christ, much less explain, you know, when and the where and what, all that kind of stuff. But, um, but we need to know that not every trial is that. Sometimes your, your spouse is just being hard-headed. That ain't the sufferings of Christ, you know. Or what I said last week, your old mean grandmama. I, I'm, I don't know why I said that. She's probably sweet as she can be. Anyway, my grandmother's my cross. No, she's not. She's your grandmother. Love her and pray for her. All right. Um, we read 1 Peter 5 through 7, which really identifies the three phases of the corridor in there. Then we went through 1 Peter 4, uh, verse 12 through 14, where it talks about the fiery trial, which is the sufferings of Christ, okay? And Peter's full of this stuff. There's some, uh, as I identified early on, there's some that are real obvious and there's some that are not obvious. And the, the real fun that we're going to get when we get to our phase three where we're just going through the scripture, we're just going to go through First Peter like that, some of those more vague or at least they appear vague to us until we see him there uh scriptures we're gonna we're gonna see the lord in them i'm, I'm excited for that those days um so here's what i wrote uh just kind of as a summary of those things that we went over last week what is the cor the corridor it is the sufferings of Christ in, uh, well, let's say I put it's a time period, and that's what this, these boxes represent. It's a time period that you pass through, 
okay? It is a trial or a test, okay? Uh, everything that happens in there is related to a trial or a test. And, and let, me, let me just say that. That trial or test is not, uh, is not first and foremost about you. It's about Christ, and it's about you being with him, and not just about you being with him in some sort of a sympathetic way. You being with him in his spirit and nature. And, I mean, just, just the fact that you would understand what this was going on would help, like Jesus in the garden praying. And, boy, the guys didn't, didn't have a clue. Um, but um, that, you would, that you would be with him, but that you would also be with him in his nature and his spirit and that you would handle it by, his, by the way that he handled the sufferings of Christ in relationship to the, the trial, the trials or whatever that he went through uh, just prior to and including some portion of the, of the crucifixion, but particularly the, the trial that was going on there. And, um, and an awareness, so, so it involves three things, the sufferings of Christ and the corridor, uh, a time period, a trial or test, an awareness or discernment of the circumstances. And that's what we were, excuse me, as I cross over here, point out this young lady and this guy, because that, I should have drawn them bigger, and I'm sorry I didn't. Uh, but that's what they represented was uh, the girl in this case had discernment uh, and awareness of the circumstances, okay? And the guy was completely um, oblivious. He just thought bad things were happening or, or, or people that he loved turned on him or... or People that were always out to get him finally got something or, or made up something. Or, or the devil is uh, running loose, you know, and in control for, you know, this period of your life, you know, and, and knock Jesus off the throne for, you know, that period. Whatever, you know, there's all these, there's all these explanations our mind and our religion has taught us that we need to know what the Bible says about it. And boy, there's nobody more perfect to tell us than Peter in 1 Peter. All right. So, uh, so again, I'm just doing a summary of what we, did, we covered last week. Okay. We discussed two main reactions when entering the corridor. And the truth is, uh, I kind of revise that to say that you really don't know what you're into until you're into the corridor. There's, there's not like a, a big warning system. And I thought about it and thought about it. And I thought, no, that's part of the, the first part of entering the corridor is, is this um, our reactions based on what we don't understand. We've mentioned this. The first is thinking it strange. The second is seeing and choosing to be with Christ's nature in it. All right. So now that, um, let me draw another part to this. There's, this is a passage, okay? So these two right here are making their way to, I'm going to use this, these two words, to the end, the end. There is an end, not just in time, but there is an end goal that, that the Father has, a hope that the Father has, and a hope that Jesus has, and those, and, and there also those two hopes are what we're supposed to have so that when we get to this third phase, all of this that, that's in God's heart is fulfilled. So that's why the, 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 
box or the, the rectangle here is more of a goal look. Uh, as I said, some of the main problems start having here in the, in the red, red alert section. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> what will determine the difference? Okay. Our spiritual state will determine how it is perceived, how this storm or whatever, you know, these, these out of control circumstances as we would see it. Um, if we see it as only a threat to our ministry, a threat to our Christian testimony, or an attack on our person, then we, and there's more to it than those three, but I'm trying to give you a variety of, of things. Um, then we have already missed the point. Okay, so if we get into here, so that's, that's part of the first part, is right here in the blue box, the beginning, that's actually where we began to decide what this is or are made aware. Now, probably next week, Lord willing, I'll show you another option or two that can happen there. But we need to see the two basic reactions here. Um, so, um, uh, one of those is, uh, would be, that uh, when we enter into this, this area, the first square, uh, the corridor, um, maybe I should find a... Um, maybe I need to make him bigger. I'm trying to make him look like a devil here, but that's not doing too good. He looks more like a cat. Uh, maybe what he needs here is uh, a pitchfork. There, now you know who that is, because you've seen him. Uh, and give him a little tail over here with a... Um, of course, the enemy can be involved in this. The enemy was involved in the sufferings of Christ. We know that. Satan entered into Judas. So there's no question that there's a real, if we don't know better, we can say, well, this is just the devil. But in this case, in the sufferings of Christ, it's not just the devil. It's the sufferings of Christ. And he's wanting us to, to know what that means and be aware of it. Um, so there's these, these attacks that come on our person or this or that but if we go with thinking it's the enemy when we get into this first stage then we've already failed the test if we think it's just a horrible storm or a horrible friend turned enemy or a horrible person who's always been looked down on me then you've already failed the test there's no there's, you know, now we have some options, but if, if you understand this properly and that person sticks with that, then you've already failed the test. Now, yes, and I'm not going to get into it now, but yes, you can get into here and change your view just to keep you from freaking out and going, oh my God, <laughs> you can get into the corridor start thinking one way and come and and then initially that will change and you begin to see things from the lord's point of view all right so um okay we i we did talk about a little bit about the basis uh, for, for why someone in the know, someone with discernment, someone who is aware of what these, this 
trial is about, why he would choose, not just like be forced into it or well, I didn't ask for this. You know, you hear people say stuff like that all the time. Well, I didn't ask for this. Um, and, and we've mentioned those two, and that is um, if you identify them as the sufferings of Christ, then you're likely going to want to, okay, let's see. Why would you want to go through these things when they could be really hard? So let's see. Um, Let's see, who can I call on here? Uh, mm, mm, mm. Well, I'm gonna go with, uh, with Jim. If you, don't, if you don't have a specific answer, that's fine. But why would somebody wanna enter into the, the sufferings of Christ? Well, Probably because when Christ died, I died, and it's it's Christ going through the sufferings, but because He now lives in me, there's sufferings we go through that are it's like the like the book said, it's the sufferings of Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So glory to God. Amen. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, Chris Bird, are you on there? Let me ask it a little differently. What two things, one that affects the father and one affects the son, would cause you to enter into the sufferings of Christ willingly? Uh, what comes to mind for me is, I guess what was talked about earlier with his glory and there you go. Him getting, um, being known and making a name for himself and that bearing out of me through his son. Amen. That's it. Yeah. It has to do with, uh, <laughs> interestingly enough, it has to, nothing to do with us because we, in a certain sense, there's nothing for us to gain in this. Now there is, and it does relate to glory. But the greater thing, um, it, what Chris is saying is that, um, number one, that the Father get glory. And how is he going to get glory? He gets glory when he gets his Son out of us. Okay? When he gets his Son out of us. And... Um, uh, the and therefore, number two, glory that Jesus would get, and that would be that his nature would be found in his bride or his, or, or his people, that we would actually bear about in our bodies the dying of the Lord Jesus, as it talks about in Second Corinthians chapter 4. So those are those can actually be so eventually get to a place where they're so strong in you that you don't want to miss it and probably you've missed it a few times but this begins to to be a huge motivation in you that you would like to be able to have some semblance of the lamb in you uh, when you're going through these things all right um All right, let me see. Um, I think I'm going to stop right there, and I know this is a little short. But um, these, these things that we're going over right now, I mean, if this was like physics or something like that, these things would be the foundational principles that everything's going to be built on, you know, um, that you will see and get it, you know, um, if you understand these things. And so um, 
in my desire, my deep desire, not that I get it across or that I get to share it. My deepest desire is that what the Lord and what the Father wants us to see in these in this book, that the Spirit of God would have all of the elements He needs to begin to just release that forth to us and in us. And so I groan, I, I wrestle, I do all the things I need to do. I pray um, so that um, till we all come to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So with that in mind, um, I'm going to stop a little early and uh, we'll see how classes go from here. But um, uh, I, it's always good for me to hear back from you also because then I can see if you're getting those elements. Amen. Well, let's just pray. Father, thank you for tonight and last week and, and all that you've been placing in us. And we recognize that you're not just teaching us. You're placing seeds in us that will one day at the right time, in the right season, spring forth. Father, I ask you that as a, uh, as a servant to your people, that you continue to open my eyes, not to the, this truth so much, because you've done so much for so long on this in me, but that you open my eyes and my heart to ways ordered of you that will help those seeds fall deeper into our ground. Thank you for the hungry hearts. Thank you for the souls that understand the struggle but want to be with you and not go with the struggle. So we look to you the rest of the way. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. What a wonderful Lord we have.